Yeah. Hello, my name is Nelda, and I'm a mom homeschooling our four cute kiddos. I am also a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The president of our church, President Nelson, has said that in coming days, it will not be possible to survive spiritually without the guiding, directing, comforting, and constant influence of the Holy Ghost. In this podcast, I interview dedicated Latter-day Saint parents who share how they succeed in homeschooling, relying on their gift of the Holy Ghost, and help their kids succeed in life, relying on their gift of the Holy Ghost. Thanks for listening, and just so you know, the opinions expressed in my podcast are solely the views of myself and the person being interviewed. It is not sponsored by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So for our first ever podcast, I have my wonderful husband, Paul, very supportive homeschool dad. Glad to be here. And uh, he's actually going to ask me the questions that I'm going to ask other moms. So yeah. Go for it. All right. So uh, let's see here. Why did you decide to homeschool? Okay. So this is a really good story. Um, a couple of years ago, I think I've homeschooled now five or six years. Uh, before that, I, my kids were going to this amazing Montessori school down the street and we loved it. And I taught Spanish there and I was, we were all happy. And then I started um, getting these feelings and um, personal revelation for sure that I was supposed to homeschool. Like I'd wake up in the middle of the night and be like, I need a homeschool. And for a whole year I fought it. And I said, I have the perfect setup and the kids are happy, but I finally knew I needed to. And so we did. And as soon as I did that feeling went away and I was really happy. Thanks for doing it. Great. Yeah. Thanks for listening to that feeling. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for going along with it. You were pretty to be convinced. Oh, you're pretty great. So how long have you been at it? Um, well, you know, five or six years. Five or six years. Because I can never remember it. I know. <laughs> I don't I don't remember when we exactly started, but it was right there in September when school starts yeah. and, and off we go. But it's been five or six years since yeah. And I guess the youngest ones remained at the at the Montessori school uh for a couple of years until they were kind of old enough to come home school. So it was a little mixed at first, right? A hybrid. And I think hybrid is a great way to start off. You know, some kind of transition phase or hybrid phase is good. Right. Okay. Yeah. And right now you have kind of a hybrid arrangement as well. Yeah. Um, so I guess, tell us how that helps you and just a little bit about what that is. So you mean like the, our homeschool co-op? Uh, yeah, the co-op. Oh, it's great. So every Tuesday we go to a town close by and it's so fun. The moms decide what they want to teach. And then we're teaching kids all different things that we have skills in. Like next semester, we're going to teach German with a good friend. And then one mom's teaching STEM. She's teaching things that I could never teach. Or I, I guess I could, but I wouldn't feel as confident as she does. Um, so we all kind of pick our fortes and we teach to the kids and they love it. And how's that different than just sending them to elementary school? Well, for one thing, um, we all have the same values. That's really important. I think we're all LDS and we have the same outlook. And uh, these moms are so loving and they're so caring. And they only want the best for the kids. Now, I'm not saying that public school, I'm, one of my main things, I never want to say like public school is evil or I should homeschool based out of fear, but I just feel like these moms and I've come to love all the kids in our co-op so much. And I think the moms, I get the feeling that the moms love my kids too. So there's definitely a feeling of love all around. That's exciting. And you can teach about the gospel too, as much as you want. That's true. And that's a great yeah. bonus. Yeah. yeah. I remember just, I just remember, you know, in high school, you know, ninth grade through uh, graduation, just that being able to go to seminary every day was a huge was a huge relief right in the middle of the day walk across the street you know it was in Salt Lake City walk across the street go to the uh, seminary building and just have that little shot in the arm every day it was tremendous so I'm glad that you can have that context so freely in your in your day That's um, nice and I hear you when you're here schooling upstairs mm -hmm. you know you have a, a your segments uh your career you know your gospel gospel centered curricula um and uh and and circular curricula and you're able to fit everything in and it's great and the kids are, are better for it i'm i'm feeling it i'm sure of it it's really tremendous i hope so yeah, yeah. great <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see this is fun so um how supportive is the dad in this oh school? i think i should ask you that ask question, question. <laughs> well i want to get your read on what how supportive what do you think my role has been because oh, i know what so i think my great. role has been i don't think it's been that much no i call you principal paco oh, and right. And I do work from home. Yeah. And so um, Paul's so good at, you're so good at like supporting me or I'll say, I don't know the answer to uh, how many pets did Calvin Coolidge have, for right. example. For example, that was a question today. <laughs> <laughs> but you might, um, 
And also sometimes the kids will ask him for help with math because it's fun to have an outside perspective on that. And I really appreciate your help. Yeah. But I think you've been really supportive and I can't thank you enough for that. No, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Once uh, once I get over the initial noisiness and the kids have gotten less noisy as they've gotten a little older, which has been good. Mm -hmm. But I, at first, after I had um, come home uh, from a, a, my job in the city uh, to work from home, it was just a little too much noise. I can take it, but, uh, but they've evened out and I've evened out and it's so much more pleasant to be at home with my fabulous wife and delightful children, uh, than it is to be away. And, you know, not to mention saving travel time and all that, all that, but that's not everybody has that opportunity. I know, I, I know that I work in tech, which is, uh, makes it a lot easier to work from home. Um, but it's been a treat to be around everybody. They come in and they give me hugs and sit on my lap. They'll just come right in and You're the fun one. <laughs> and I get to be the fun one. Um, so when Nella, when Nella needs some backup for enforcement, you know, just with regular parenting days, when Nella needs some backup for enforcement, I'm there. When she needs some backup for getting lunch going, I might come out for a yeah. snack and she'll ask me to start the lunch, lunch lady, Paul. macaroni and cheese and I'll <laughs> start it. And, uh, add my own twist and stuff like that but anyway it's it's fun it is great to be home but uh i felt super fortunate finding a uh, woman that was faithful enough to listen to that prompting whatever that prompting was whether it was send the kids to school so so that this so that that or <clears throat> bring the kids into the home to homeschool i'm just glad that you couldn't resist the prompting you went with it and it has paid off and it hasn't been uh you know perfect because uh, uh, efforts have been strong across the board. Um, but now you're in like the fifth year and everything's going great. Uh, it's, and you have to figure it out as the kids grow, of course, you know, change curriculum and kids will outgrow certain methods of teaching and things like that. And so the teacher evolves with it and the curriculum evolves. And so you're doing great. Mm -hmm. Um, I've just been really proud to see you dig in every year and, uh, and make it work in just a slightly different fashion every time. And you're always taking notes, always um, going to podcasts for other moms. So, I love that. Yeah. It's very inspirational. Yeah. So I think that yeah. the reason this podcast exists is because there, there are some answers out there that we want to squeeze out of the other homeschool moms, right? Yeah. So Specifically how they use the Holy Ghost to help them in their day-to-day. -day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So building a firm foundation for the kids. Um that can only be led by a mom that's that's got the Holy Ghost with her <clears throat> and is is leading him in that direction, which is tremendous. So thank you for thank doing you. that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Does Come Follow Me have a role in your homeschooling? That's the church authorized curriculum. So how does that fit into a homeschool week? So definitely it's at the top of our list of every day. We um, either watch a video based off some thing we've done or do some art based off Come Follow Me. Uh, or we just open our scriptures and go through the curriculum and we um, just kind of do a little bit every day, a little chunk every day. And it, it's really great by, because by Sunday, I feel like the kids really know what's, you know, what they can talk about at church and what they can discuss with their peers, what they've learned. I've seen that. I'm glad that you have that time to, mm -hmm. to fit that in. I don't think everybody <clears throat> gets that. Being primary teachers um, on and off, we've, we've seen, you know, some kids get zero come follow me lessons at home and some get all, you know, a great, great coverage, but uh, I'm grateful that you got that uh, kind of as an, an anchor to your day uh, because um, it's just, it's of course critical and foundational to the mission that you just described. Uh, so uh, thanks for doing that. Yeah, thank you. That's great. It's tremendous. I love hearing you guys out there chattering away. So okay. the way our, our house is arranged, this is a log home. As you can see, we have a loft upstairs. And when we first came in here, uh, we had you know, and got this house uh, here in Hebrew, Utah, we, um, you know, we had a loft upstairs, weren't sure what we were going to do with it. And things came along that gigantic whiteboard. I, yeah. I got that from an actual elementary school in Tooele. We have a whiteboard that covers one, you know, one entire low wall of that upstairs loft. And uh, it has a great view and beautiful place to be and teach, not during the summer, but during the school year, <laughs> yeah. it's great. So, so do you take summers off? Um, what is that like? So we try to do some math. We try to do some handwriting and reading. Definitely a lot of reading. 
Um, so we start off strong and probably by August, we're just taking a break. <laughs> but we try to do some more year round so we can take breaks when we need to. Right. Going off script just a little bit, how is your kids reading and how's that developed real quick? And and uh, how, how have they gotten to where they're at? Um, are they reading, for the most part, it's really good. They love to stay up late at night and just get stuck in a book, they say. And I do, uh, have, we do reading during our homeschool, like 20, 20 ish minutes. And it has to be kind of more classics books, not just like comic books or dog man. A lot of dog man. <laughs> And so that's a really good time, I feel like, for them to uh, to to read something a little bit more highbrow. And they love it. Good. They never bite that. Good. So you've got some older kids and younger kids. Um, and they're each, are they each at different levels? How would you say they're, are they all on track or is anybody behind? Um, it's something I just pray about and I kind of feel like they're, they're okay I don't have like a pat answer okay but no, I think they're okay I think they're yeah they're on track and some people like reading uh more than others but yeah uh you go to the library every week and <laughs> they, know every our week names. they know your names uh yeah. we we dominate the lego contest there yeah uh, oh yeah Wasatch County Legos watch out uh he's a champion and like three times and now they four times and now the four, kids oh, four, times. four times and now the kids are coming up and uh so maybe it's time to pass it on to them, but but uh, but you guys really have devoured pretty much every uh, age appropriate book in the library yeah. for for the children. Definitely, they know that place inside and out. They, and they go to chess club and Lego club and uh, you know stuff like a uh, Minecraft club. Mm -hmm. uh, but they really like the library, and it's been a great resource. It's great. Communist. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh we love our not free li we love our free library <laughs> and uh, we, we're, we're gonna try not to be political on this podcast at all because it's not about anything like that uh it's it's about love and getting the job done all right so here's the big question <clears throat> where are you going with all this what's the end game on this uh we uh you know everybody hopes for the best for their children um is, do you think that this is going to get your kids the opportunities that they need in life? And do you think that this is, uh, you know, extracting them from the world? Is that going to give them enough resistance to push against, to grow against, mm -hmm. you know, in this environment in which you have them? Or are they going to go out into the world and get blown over by every wind of doctrine and and every, you know, philosophy that comes their way? Or uh, what, uh, how are you going to, make sure that this is a strong enough environment for them, I, I guess. And, and what's, and what's the end goal, I guess. Do, yeah. And do you feel like you're going to be able to reach that end goal? Okay. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. There's a lot. That's pretty much the whole thing. <laughs> so I had some thoughts as you were asking me that question. Um, first of all, and this is something I took from a conference we went to once, uh, a good and beautiful conference with Jenny Phillips. She's talked about this a couple of times. Um, but she said that if you take a like a plant, like a little tiny seedling plant and you put it outside, it'll probably just die in a few days. But if you nurture it in a greenhouse and give it lots of love and water and it can have sunlight, but it's not getting all like the cold weather, it'll grow really well. And eventually you can move that outside of your greenhouse and transplant it. And I feel like that's the same with our kids. Like if we nourish them with the gospel and with, you know, good, beautiful books and just the kind of like a... Apostle Paul said, everything virtuous, lovely, and of good report or praiseworthy. And then we transplant them outside to the big world. I think that they have a lot more chance. And if we just say, okay, good luck. Right. So that's one thought. And another one was, and we talked about this this morning, how uh, uh, one of my favorite podcasters, Sally Clarkson says, in the absence of a family culture, your kids will go the way of the world. And so I think if we can create a strong family culture with come follow me, um, gospel centered information um and also teaching them how to use personal revelation in their lives and to pray about things before they do it i think that that can protect them from kind of the great and spacious building so to speak absolutely so did that answer your question i think it did we'll, we'll talk about the ultimate destination again in a minute but i think okay. that i think you're right about the <clears throat> the fortification i think uh i've really been excited our oldest is now 12 years old and i've always been excited that the oldest could turn 12 and then go to the temple yeah. yeah, just really tremendous. Um, president Nelson, you know, the president of our church, he uh, has, um, I guess he's he's uh, invited 
all, all of us to go to the temple and to basically interview with the Lord and to, to meet with the Lord and that the Lord wants to teach us in his temple. And that is, uh, that's very exciting. And I can see, you know, billions of dollars spent on new temple construction in the last many years and billions further yet to be spent in the farthest corners of the world. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Ulaanbaatar, Ulaanbaatar uh, Mongolia had some friends that went on missions there and they're getting a temple there. Uh, it's bananas. Uh, so, but the, you know, like President Hunter said, the temple should be the great symbol of our of our church membership. And I'm really glad that uh, with this, you know, with homeschooling, you've had flexibility to send, oh, yeah. you know, send Elizabeth off to uh, on temple trips on Fridays when the baptistry is quiet, you can get it done, you know, kind of in and out. It's mm -hmm. really great. Uh, I've been with, uh, you know, Lizzie several times since she was able to start going at the beginning of this year. And, uh, you know, when she was 11, turning 12 back in January, um, and she's had a great year. She has, the, the stake, I think, has a goal to do 5,000 ordinances with the children. I believe that's it, 5,000. And she's done over 200 baptisms. Incredible. That's incredible. And she's really proud of it, too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's, uh, so taking that temple attendance, and not just attending the temple, but really building on what president nelson said mm -hmm. and lizzie's 12 years old she's old enough to do this you go to the temple and you have a you you check in with the lord and you mm -hmm. you tell him how you're doing and uh uh you you ask him to teach you in his house and so that applies more with some more advanced ordinances of the temple but i think even a child like lizzie she's serious she's She's a, a a sober child, very, yeah, right? She is. So anyway, it's very it, mature. I think that I think that uh, these intermediate steps in this long prog progression are some of them are just totally indispensable, like like the temple. Mm -hmm. I think that the goal of getting the kids to the temple every week, if we stick to that, I think it will continue to bear amazing fruit Absolutely. as it has throughout this whole last yeah. ten months to see Lizzie go into the temple. A, maybe a little bit weighed down by being a weird homeschooler, right? Like, oh, I'm a weird homeschooler. Sometimes mm -hmm. she feels that way. Yeah. But, um, but not always. She she comes she comes out of the temple and she's light as a feather. Yeah. It's just amazing to see. So, um, but okay. So we have some intermediate steps. We know uh -huh. the temple's great. We have, uh, um, and I think that that as you're talking about the mission. Mm -hmm to build a spiritual foundation for the children so that they can, so that they can have uh, the Holy ghost with them and learn to understand and listen to its influence and receive inspiration and even revelation um, that, 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 that there's a lot of teaching that goes along with that, but there's a, it can only be done through experience. And so getting them to the temple and, and another thing I like that you do is, is your midweek service projects. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> getting out and going to serve somebody. There are widows around and, and, uh, there are, uh, you know, things to be done and things to be planted and whatever. So Nelda goes and does cute little service projects. That's definitely a prompting over. to, to reach out to others and teach the kids how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And they come back, you know, great. It's super valuable. We, yeah. When I was a kid, it was all scouts and classic, you know, young men's, young women's stuff. And mm -hmm. I'm glad the young men's, young women's are, uh, they have a strong focus in all the right areas, yeah. which is great. So um, anyway, so with the, the, the end goal, mm -hmm. uh, what are you hoping, anything further you'd like to mention about, um, let's say secular education. We've touched on spiritual education and a good path there. And I think the kids are solid there. And then on secular education, uh, we don't maybe have all the intermediate steps worked out mm -hmm. as far as, you know, when to hit college or mm -hmm. anything like that. But talk about that. Talk about college mission, yeah. the possibilities, yeah. the things you're weighing. and Right. So, up? yeah, like Paul said, we're kind of in the middle of it all. But I have like my feelers out. I'm always talking to other amazing moms whose kids have gone to college, who homeschool their missions. And they've done it. And so I, I'm actually going to try to interview them yeah. on this podcast, but um, probably some kind of hybrid option in high school, like seminary and maybe like orchestra or pottery, you know, in addition sure. to homeschooling. But um, I feel like, okay, that's what I'm going to say. With today's age, there are so many online options. You know, we don't just have to like 
wait till they're in senior and then, oh, here's college. Like there's so many cool options where they can take uh, credits before college. And then I would love for them to go to college and absolutely go on a mission. My, even our girls are excited to go on missions. So that's been a huge focus. So right. mission and definitely college and anything we can do basically to give them a leg up on that, both with time and saving money, I think is really helpful. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. College. So you have a master's degree in in uh, university higher, administration. University administration. Yeah. I was going to say higher ed administration. It's okay. The same thing. Okay. <laughs> and I I have an MBA, and uh, and then a, an undergrad in technology. Um, so we both been through the system for a lot of years: public school, college. Uh, Nella's you know Nella graduated summa cum laude from your master's program, mm -hmm. right? Tremendous. Um, you did well too. I did well too, mm -hmm. but that was a more private school. I think we pay for grades there. <laughs> I think they just <laughs> dial it up for the amount of money that you pay these days for college. But I think we both uh, saw that college is absolutely crazy expensive. So um, anyway, I, I think we did a tour of BYU the other day on the golf carts and the kids loved yeah. that and their little BYU cousins were with us and uh, they joined us for the for the ride and they got to see the whole thing. So it gave them a good little vision of of that. And I think that if you're going to, if there's a, an experience worth having, that would be a true experience worth having. So um, I hope that we can get them out there. They're great kids. And and I think all of them deserve the experience uh, of that tremendous institution um, and the price. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's quite a value. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I, I think we just don't want to foreclose any opportunity to the children. We're not bunker builders. We're not hunker downers. Um, we believe in the prophet and we believe what he says. And uh, that as this world gets more and more squirrely, the kids need to have tools to get around or through those obstacles and and succeed and be able to and they, you know empower their own families in the next generation. Mm -hmm. So I can finally see, I think I'm finally mature enough to see the value of the temple and of um, communing with the Lord there and taking your guide of guidance from the Lord in this undertaking. That's why this is not a podcast about necessarily the mechanics of homeschooling, though there will be a lot of that. You know, what curriculum do you use? You know, what's right. your schedule? You know, how do you guys, how does outside time fit into everything and so forth? But really, how can you... Every, I would say that our kids have probably some of the greatest opportunities of anybody in the entire world. And I'll, I'll just say that very freely. I think there are a lot of people who succeed in the, uh, in the temporal world very well, and that's tremendous. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that our kids succeed spiritually above all, and then whatever blessings upon them, you know, beyond that, you know, the more, the better, but, uh, this, I guess this is about that foundation Absolutely. And, and staying on track at this, at this time, um, while getting that, while not foreclosing on any, you know, worldly opportunity that might be very valuable to them. So kind of speaking to what you said a minute ago about, um, you know, this is not a podcast about curriculum. There are like a billion out there and Instagram stories are full of them. And I respect all of them. But truly, I just want to have other moms share how they heard the Holy Ghost, you know, in their day to day. Like, I'll just give you one example. Um, I, when I first, like the first couple of months I started homeschooling, of course, it was hard. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And am I good enough to do this? And I, a lot of self-doubt. And I remember one day, it was like a fall morning. And I just went, I, I had prayed and I was like, Heavenly Father, you led me to come homeschool. I need to see some fruits of my labors, you know, and <laughs> we were still trying to figure it out. And so uh, we just went to play outside and I was just kind of uh, a little bit down about it. And I didn't know if I was doing the right things. Um, and I, but I had that really earnest prayer to Heavenly Father that morning, you know, I said, please show me. And we went outside and it was the most beautiful day. Our oldest daughter, she wrote this beautiful poem about fall. And she had been telling me a few, you know, like before that, she's like, I don't like poetry. It's not for me, you know? And then she wrote this beautiful poem. I still have it somewhere. And then my, our other kids did like some science that day. It was just this wonderful answer to my prayer. I'm, I'll never forget that day where I just saw some of the fruits of my labor. And I just looked at the sky. I was like, thank you, Heavenly Father. I needed that confirmation. 
And so that's what I'm looking for from moms on this podcast is just to hear, you know, how their prayers were answered, how it was confirmed to them that they were doing the right thing. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I think that I think that women of faith are in a, such an amazing position right now. You know, coming out of my master's degree with so much debt, I, I, I was just sure that there was a better way. I knew there had to be a better yeah. way to educate. <laughs> And thankfully with, um, you know, online, online classes, YouTube has tremendous resources, uh, so much free, free learning out there, uh, you know, chat GPT, you know, AI curricula or not curriculum, but AI answers to some questions, some nuanced questions that the kids are looking for. All of these tremendous tools have come out to make it so much easier. I think my poor mom wished that she had homeschooled you know, maybe my brother and I, you mm-hmm. know, on the, on the tail end of our six kids. And, uh, uh, but I think we were just, we just pushed back too much because it was not that great. But with the media that's out there these days, if you get a mom who's, um, or a parent who's, uh, who can go find the best and bring it to them, man, they can just yeah. get curated. You can curate the very best of the world and bring totally. it in. So it's, it's, it's a great blessing. Anyway, yeah. Great time to do it. I think. Yeah. It's and not 90s homeschooling that no. I meet moms who did that. And I just, you, you're oh. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So tremendous. Um, all right, let's get to our, our last standard question for right now. What's one piece of advice you'd give to other homeschooling moms? Okay, I did come prepared to answer this. All right, great. And it's just snuggle your kids as long as they'll let you. <laughs> I was just telling Paul that um, a few days ago we were snuggled and I was doing a read aloud, which is our, all of our kids' favorite time. And um, our youngest said to our daughter, he said, can you pass me the water? And she's like, oh, you can get it yourself. He goes, I can't, I'm stuck in a snuggle. Oh. And it was so cute. <laughs> and I'm just so glad he didn't want to leave. And I just, I'm so grateful. I have that, those extra hours to be with our kids every day. I mean, it's golden. It's truly golden. And I, I think I'll be really glad that we were able to have that time with them because life's so fast. It goes so fast. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. And there's, they've just become such wonderful people to be around Mm -hmm. and uh, just wonderful people to be around. So thanks for all you do. Thank you. You're great. All right. Well, we'll see you on the next one. Okay. All right. See you on the next one. Thanks.